This is just as clean as it gets. Same pattern throughout the entire head, the little T-dot, and then, you know, just sets up really, really nice. Yeah, I don't like a lot of complications on the top of the crown because it, my eye gravitates towards that instead of what I need to focus on, which is the golf ball and the mm -hmm. face. So the more I can focus on face angle and how it's setting up, the more I'm attached to the golf shot. And that's why I love this driver house is so clean. Like my eyes gravitate towards the top line and the face. So in 2025, Taylor May is introducing the new QI35 line of woods. And the drivers in particular, were really unlocking another level of performance for the golfer. We again, sort of push the envelope as it relates to the form language of our drivers. The look of them, when you set them down or where you see it from a distance, you know that's the new tailor-made QI35. Tiger, you know, over the uh, the years, I mean, you've seen a lot of drivers. Yes. And uh, kind of grew up in an era of a lot of innovation in, in, in driver equipment, going from wood to metal to sort of the size of the clubs. How have you adapted to that? What was your process throughout all those years? Well, I think I grew up in the most uh, transform transformative time in golf history. As you were saying earlier, is that I played with Persimmon growing up and then had my first tailor-made driver. I have loved getting longer and hitting it further <laughs> with, yeah. with these drivers now. It is awesome. For the QI35 drivers, our mission is to deliver the most amount of forgiveness to golfers with the right launch conditions. And if you look at it over time, you can see the history of drivers uh, evolving and evolving. And over that evolution, uh, drivers have become more and more forgiving. When I first came on tour, I, I averaged 296 in 97. Yeah. And I, they thought I was long. Yeah, you were long. You were right? definitely long. Well, <laughs> yeah. You were? Not now people hit their three woods 290 now. Beautiful shot. For me, last year I hit, I think, the most fairways I've ever hit. Um, yeah, you were top and five I'm, in accuracy. And I'm, gonna, yeah. and I'm gonna take that all the time, right? Mm, so yeah. that's what's cool to see is, you know, maybe I wasn't swinging it perfect, but yeah. I found a lot of fairways because everything is just bringing it in a little bit tighter. Yeah. <laughs> I wanna see him. Colin, you have to hit this driver with that T height. See how you freak out. Okay. This is the original one, right? Easy, the original one driver, <laughs> right? Easy. Yeah, there's no faith. There's no faith. First in these metal two. wood. I was gonna ask how high you tee because I don't really know how high you tee these drivers. <laughs> We're about to find out. I'm gonna guess not this high. Nice little draw. See, I was made. Tight. I was made for this stuff. This is why I draw. I know it's all about forgiveness. I. But I, this is I what love, you, this is what I love because I mean honestly, if you were to practice with this, it makes me focus in a way that you have to hit the center. And that's what you're so good at, hitting the ball out of the middle of the face. When you hit it high off center, you typically more, get more distance. Why is that? Because that shot is above the center of gravity. And when you do that, you get higher launch and lower spin because of gear effect. And so we call that area sort of above the center of gravity as that area of opportunity to hit longer shots. And so for us, we wanted to lower that center of gravity and give golfers a bigger area of opportunity for longer shots more often. What do you want? Like a high draw, low? Just hit your fade. What do you want? Normal, let me, I want your Bullet little, fade. Yeah. Flat fade. Oh, sh <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to tee it. Is that, is that how high you tee it normally? Yeah, about half, 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 half the ball, ball above the crown, half yeah. the ball below the crown. Too steep there. Oh, <laughs> He can't end on that one, you know that, that right? That's so good. You know that. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How's it going? Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. When you're trying to find a balance between launch, spin, speed, forgiveness, all of those characteristics that we care about, it usually comes down to pulling a bunch of tiny levers, shaping, materials, mass placement, as you dial those in, it's not a perfect science because you can create a really, really cool shape that would be rejected by golfers. Now that one, please. So you're playing in this like box of like, hey, we have to actually have human golfers who have a traditional sense of what they want to look at 
um, hit these and perform, but then you also wanna make sure you're maximizing all those shapes and materials to get the best performance you can. It's one thing to make a singular product that has extremely high moment of inertia. That is a very forgiving driver. But without the proper launch conditions, our players aren't gonna get what they want out of it. So this is basically building on the learning of what we did with QI10 to optimize a driver for QI35. So center of gravity CG is essentially a point within the head that is the balance point of the driver. And so when we talk about CG or CG projection, which is a kind of a new term for, for 2025, it's the balance point if you turn that head on its face that really defines the way that product can perform. So with all these products, we've moved balance point down, which means there's more face that's above the balance point, which is your area of opportunity for better launch conditions. We've combined high moment of inertia with low CG projection in order to make a club head that is not only resistant to twist, so super stable, but optimized in terms of launch conditions. When you combine low CG projection, high MOI, you get the best of both worlds. More distance, more forgiveness. Nelly, Scotty, trophies. It's simple. Nelly, Scotty, trophies. We're coming off one of the most successful years in TaylorMade history. The amount of victories, the amount of successes, the number one player in the world, both on the men's and women's tour, it's been phenomenal. So as a product creator, it's a little bit daunting to understand that you have to take it to another level with these players. Golf is about adapting. You're never gonna have your A game, so when you're not hitting it in the center of the face, you want a club that you can trust even when you're not on at all times. So having something that is the best of both worlds helps a lot even on your bad days. I've been watching ball flight and fitting golf clubs every day for more than a decade. I wouldn't be there if I didn't have a deep understanding of the data and the tech that's available to me to help me do my job. It feels very easy, like I said, but I feel like I feel like that even before I've swung it, like you just put it down and it just feels like there's options there. And I believe this is where you know, TaylorMade are always trying to innovate, always trying to push boundaries. It's like the spider version of drivers. <laughs> exactly. In a great driver, we have to kind of hit three things. The form language of it, it has to look amazing. Secondly, functionality, it has to perform. The third one is fit. And so the ability to optimize the performance for the golfer is a key component to more performance in the future. We created a new face, a new face for fitting. And that face will unlock the ability to measure the head. Everybody looks at launch, spin, and speed, but we wanna look at why is it launching the way it is? Why is it going as fast as it is? Where are you hitting it on the face? What's the rate of closure? And because we can now do that with reflective markers in the select fit parts and her fitting parts for QI35, we can unlock a whole nother level of performance for the golfer. And so we're really excited by this fit component to QI35. So what you have to do previously is get your little silver stickers out and put them all over the face. But to be able to have those reflective um, markers on the club face, especially for fitting, is, is really cool. Looking at um, like where you're hitting it on the face, I'll have a driver that I, that I think I really like, but I'm missing it a bit too much on the toe or the heel. And seeing that on the GC quad and being able to just mess around with the weights a little bit, to then try to find the center of the face. Um, I, I think it's just gonna make the, the whole fitting process so much, so much easier and so much more simple. Someone like Colin Morikawa, whose miss is a couple millimeters, having a marker on the face that's even half of a millimeter off, which is very, very easy to do with stickers, is impactful to what he sees in terms of his performance. So he's gonna make adjustments to that based on those markers. And when we can make them as consistent as we do with QI35, he's able to unlock that next level of consistency when he tries his products. 
as a fitter, the more data we can get, the more accurate data we can get, the better the fit. Biggest benefits for us is having the carbon face where we're able to embed the reflective markers inside the layers. Nobody else can do this. So again, we're leading this charge and it's uh, being kind of called a new way of fitting and versus the old way. And it's, it's really exciting to have TaylorMade again being an innovator in a space and today it's fitting. Well, I've had a unique swing and, you know, unique footwork, and it's something that works really well for me. And if I try to swing normal, that's not going to work for everybody else. And so I think each driver should be specific to that player and um, having a driver that fits to you is extremely important. As a player constantly trying to move forward, you want your equipment to be moving forward at the same time or even, or even faster and know that that's going to help you and you're going to have an edge. Um, on everyone else and everything else. So having that trust in the entire team, everybody that's behind what goes into these clubs is massive. I feel very, very lucky to be a part of it. And um, I think, you know, I'm so grateful uh, for all the work and all the time that goes into putting those 14 clubs in my bag that keeps me ahead of the game. I think when you have people around you or companies around you that are trying to strive to be better, it also makes you be better. So knowing that people are putting in the exact same effort you're putting in day in and day out just makes you want to be a better player and a better person. TaylorMade as, a, as an innovator in the golf space are unrivaled. I think every year they're thinking outside the box and are always thinking seems like one step ahead of the competition and it's it's really cool to see and I feel like I've got a slight little advantage over the rest of, of everyone because you know I have such a great team behind me that are going to guarantee that when I tee it up I've, I've got the best equipment possible. It is our relentless pursuit of innovation that makes us special because we know that what we're making is groundbreaking and we know that what we're making is going to affect every golfer and help them play golf better and love the game more. We certainly invented the metal wood and we've had many innovations over the years that really have changed the industry. You think about movable weight technology, you think about the ability to adjust the hosel and loft sleeves. It really started, started here. We're not done. We have a lot of opportunity as we move forward. Entering an era of big data and, and innovating around the ability to measure the head in a way that nobody's been able to do from a, an OEM and a big major manufacturer. It's just one step closer to us getting more connected to golfers, getting them the ability to play better golf through our equipment. <laughs>